I think more than any other, zigs are the one tactic that seem to baffle and confuse a lot of people. And I think in a lot of cases, the only time a lot of people do use zigs is as a last resort, right at the end of a session, they might put a zig on one rod just to try and salvage a blank. But in this video, I wanna show you how I go about fishing with zigs and show that they don't have to be confusing and on their day, they are an absolutely unbeatable carp catching tactic. Now a lot of people seem to make the mistake of thinking that zigs are only for the warmer months of the year, but that's really not the case at all. The fish will, will spend their time within that water column at whatever depth they feel they're most comfortable. Now in the colder months, that's generally the, the depth at which they are feeling that they're, they're warmest. Um, so if for example, on a, on a winter's day, we have uh, sunny periods, fish can often come really high up in the layers to take advantage of the sun's warming rays. So even though it may be frosty on the nighttime, if you have a warm day, it's not unusual for those fish to be just within a foot or two of the surface of the water. Now here, we are just moving out of winter into the spring, and we've got a really nice warm sunny day today. The water temperatures though are still very, very cold. So I would imagine those upper layers they will be the warmest regions of the lake and I'm anticipating that is where the fish are going to be located today. Now there are two different ways of presenting a zig. First of all is the traditional fixed zig which I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with. Basically we set a hook link at the depth we want the hook bait to be presented. So if I want to present my hook bait three feet off the lake bed, then I will fish with a buoyant hook bait on a three foot hook link. Now the disadvantages when fishing with a fixed zig is if you want to alter the depth at all, you have to reel in the, reel in the zig and you either cut it down to, to shorten the, the depth you want to be fishing or tie a new hook link or create an extension if you want to fish it higher up in the water column. That of course means disturbance to the swim. You have to reel in and recast until you get it right. So my preference is to fish with an adjustable zig, which we'll talk about in a second. An adjustable zig allows me to adjust the depth, either shallower or higher in the water column, without having to reel in and recast and cause any unnecessary disturbance to the swim. Now on shallower venues, I would opt to fish with a fixed zig. But when I mean shallow venues, I'm generally talking sort of five or six feet or under. Now I think a few people might be surprised there when I talk about fishing with zigs on shallow venues. I think a lot of people think of oh, it's only three or four feet deep. If you present a bottom bait, it isn't far for those fish to tip down and have a feed. If those fish are within the water column, if they are happily swimming around at mid depth, then there's nothing to say they will tip down and feed on your hook bait. I've done very well fishing on shallow lakes just by using short zigs of a foot or 18 inches when everyone else has been sat on the bottom catching nothing. Now when it comes to hook baits for zigs, any floating hook bait will do. In the early days, zigs were tied just using 15 mil pop-ups tied to a, a mono hook link, and that will still catch fish. But I do find that the smaller the hook bait, the better. My preferred zig hook bait would always be a small piece of foam. And I know a lot of people find it hard to comprehend that you can catch carp on just a, just a piece of foam. And, and I myself was dubious to say the least in the beginning. But having fished zigs extensively over the years, I've found that just a small piece of foam has outfished all of the hook baits time and time again. Now I'd fished the foam in conjunction with the zig aligners, but on this occasion, I'm not actually using foam. I am instead using small eight mil pop-up. And the reason being is that this fishery 
uh, doesn't allow any artificial baits of any description, so things like rubber sweet corn and uh, foam, cork, etc. So in this instance, I'm actually using some 8mm pop-ups. It's a mixed pot of colours. It's the CC Moore 8mm Northern Special Mini Pop-ups. And I think on venues where artificial baits are banned, these little 8mm pop-ups are the next best alternative. So with all that being said, let's take a look at the hook baits and presentation in more detail. So here I have what would be my go-to zig setup, and it's an all black zig aligner. Now it's tied to 10 pound zig and floater line. It is important to use a, a dedicated zig surface fishing line. This one floats, there are a number out there on the market that don't actually do that job but if you're fishing with buoyant hook baits then it stands to reason you want a nice buoyant hook length that isn't going to try and drag the hook bait down at all. If you are fishing with fixed zigs and you're using long hook lengths you don't want the weight of the line trying to pull down the hook bait in any way so it is important to use a, a floating hook length material. Now the hook I'm using is a size 8 zig and floater hook and then we have the zig aligner sleeve itself. Now you'll see we have a, a loop on one side of the zig aligner that allows us to mount our hook bait tight to the shank of the hook and something else the zig aligner does it creates the optimum hooking angle to drastically improve the hooking properties of the rig. Now in the past before the release of the zig aligners I think hook holds were always a little bit hit and miss when fishing with zigs. Um, used to experience hook pulls and a few slightly precarious hook holds just sort of nicked around the, the corner of the mouth but the zig aligners have drastically improved the hooking ratio, the amount of fish hooked, the amount of fish landed, it's virtually 100%. So yeah, they're a great little invention and they have undoubtedly put more zig fish on the bank for me. Now this is the actual setup that I'm using here today. I mentioned before that foam and artificial baits aren't allowed here at the fishery, so I'm instead using the 8 mil Northern Special pop-ups. But I also mentioned how much the zig aligners drastically improve the hooking properties, and I still want to incorporate that into my setup. So I'm using a cut down zig aligner sleeve going over the eye of the hook here. Again, that just ensures we've got a nice wide gape. It's more metal, more hook to catch a hold of the carp's mouth, and again, greatly improve the hooking properties. Well, I've just reeled in one of the rods to make a bit of a, a bit of a change. I've seen a few fish showing just to the right on the back of the on the back of the wind here. So I just reeled in one of the rods to to cast it right. And just while I was sorting that one out, the one rod that was still left in the water has just rattled off. I had actually just changed the depth on this just a, a short while ago as well. The sun's come out, it's turned into a really lovely warm spring day. So I just raised the, the height of the zig up in the water by a couple of foot. And yeah, a couple of minutes later it's rattled off. Yes! There he is. He's a chunky little one. Nice. Right. Let's get him out and have a look at him. And here we go. We've got a, a spring zig munching calf. He's a proper cool fish. He's got a, a little head and mouth, little fins. But he's probably the heaviest carp I've ever caught for its size. I got a real shock when I picked the net out the water. He looked about 12, 13 pounds, but in reality, he's probably 15, 16. He's like, I think he's made out of lead or something. <laughs> he's a proper solid fish. And this bite came about not long after I made a change in depth. The sun's just popped out and you can feel the air temperature rising. 
So I just raised the zig in the water by around two feet. And this bite came probably two minutes after I made that change in depth. So it just goes to show you do have to keep, keep working at it when you've got those adjustables. You don't need to recast, you can just raise and lower the zig within the water column until you find the depth the fish are at. Well, I'm just about to have a recast of this adjustable zig, but while it's out of the water, I thought we'd look at it in a bit more detail. So this is the adjustable zig kit as it comes. You get a, a run ring there, to which I've attached a four ounce lead. Now the leads can actually be fished uh, fixed like I've got here, or they can be fished drop-off style. Now I'm fishing the lead fixed here. I've just put a plastic T-peg in the little hole there, or instead you can fish it drop-off style just by putting in a PVA strip. That provides enough resistance to make the cast, but the lead will drop off in the event of a take. So that's free running on the line. Then we come down to the zig flow itself, which works very much like a marker float. As you let line off the reel, the float will rise to the surface and therefore so will the, the hook bait. Now to attach the hook link to the main line, we have a ball bearing swivel, which just fits inside the rubber sleeve on the top of the float there. If you come down to the hook link here, I've got around three feet of zig and float line in the 10 pound braking strain. I mentioned before how important it is to use a dedicated zig float line, such as this one, which actually floats. Now I say it's around three feet, the exact length of this hook link is from the butt ring, the start of the butt ring on the rod down to the roller on the top of the reel. Now the reason I do that is when I pop the float on the surface, I then pinch the line at the start of the butt ring here, then turn the spool on the reel until my fingers that are gripping the line comes down to the roller on the top of the reel. So now the float will be under the surface, but I know that the hook bait will now be touching the surface. It'll be the exact depth of the swim. Now, whatever depth I then decide to pull the float down from there is the depth I'm fishing below the surface. Now I've also got a line clip mounted on the rod exactly one foot above the roller on top of the reel. That just allows me to make any smaller one foot adjustments in the depth. I always make a note of whatever depth I'm fishing at that particular moment. Then if I do catch a fish, I know exactly what depth I have to reset that rod. So next up, I'd like to talk about bite indication and the type of indication I use depends on whether I'm fishing with fixed zigs or adjustables. Here, for example, we're fishing with adjustables. And in these situations, I'm always in direct contact with the fish. We've got the, the run rig, the heavy lead anchored on the lake bed, so when that fish picks up the hook bait, the line will travel freely through that run ring and give me a positive indication pretty early on. So in this instance, I'm just using small, lightweight bobbins, something that isn't gonna to put too much resistance on the line and pull the hook bait down through the run ring. I still got the alarm set on the most maximum sensitivity setting though. So when the fish does pick up the hook bait, a bite should be a pretty positive indication. So I think the big question when it comes to fishing over zigs is to spawn or not to spawn. Um, now, I know a lot of people can't quite get their head around just fishing with a little piece of black foam or a little tiny pop-up just in the lake on its own with no loose feed around it. It is a devastating tactic, but at the end of the day, it all boils down to the type of venue you're fishing. Here, for example, we're fishing a prolific lake with a lot of carp, and for that reason, I am gonna be introducing some feed over the top of them zigs to try and create a active feeding situation. I'm not gonna lie, it's probably one of my least 
favorite tactics just because it is so messy and dirty, but there's no denying it is a great tactic in the right situation. And I hope today is gonna to be one of them right situations. Otherwise I wanna get messy for nothing. Okay, so here I've got my sloppy spod mix. So this is some CC More live system bag mix. I've added a full bag of powdered milk and also a can of the creamy carnation milk as well. It's a really sloppy, wet mix. But when that spawn hits the water, it gives off a nice big milky cloud and you've got all these fine particles falling through the water column, hopefully enticing fish to feed within the layers. It's a messy job, but there are a few things you can do to minimize the mess and the splatter. So first of all, when you are filling your spawn, I think a lot of people try to get so much in. So there the spawn's only actually around half full, but that will be enough to provide a nice, attractive cloud. I've just put a couple of spawns, this sloppy mix in the swim. I've got a nice cloud there, I can see it from here. We've got a nice, a nice cloud of attraction. What I'll do, I'll keep topping up that spot every 15 minutes with a fresh spawn or two just so there's always that cloud lingering in the water column. So I've just baited up this room, I've just put the spot rod away, but on lower stocked venues, I wouldn't be fishing in this manner. I wouldn't be putting spots of bait over the top, certainly not every 15 minutes ringing the dinner bell. I'd just be fishing zigs on their own. Now I said before, I think a lot of people struggle to get their head round just fishing just a, a single piece of foam, unflavored in, in the lake with no, no bait, no loose feed around it at all, but it does work. Um, I know in the past I had messed around with, with flavoring pieces of foam. I didn't find it made any difference at all. If anything, I caught more fish on unflavored foam. I think on a lot of these situations where you are presenting just a single hook bait, just a single piece of foam or a single black pop-up in the swim, you are effectively fishing for fish that aren't actually feeding. They're sat within the water column because that's where they feel comfortable. If they were actively searching for food, they would be venturing down to the lake bed looking for food items. They're not doing that. They're suspended within the water column, not particularly feeding. I think a lot of the time you're, you're provoking some sort of inquisitive response. Fish don't have hands. The only way they can see what that thing is in front of them is by feeling it with, with their mouth. And I think that is why it is so successful. And I think that's also why I've done better on unflavored foam. If you give that foam a food signal, those fish that are suspended in the water column, they're not feeding. If you give it a food signal, it then becomes a food source. Those fish aren't really eating. And I think they can then choose to ignore it. Whereas when their curiosity takes over and it's in front of them, they want to know what it is. They pick it up out of curiosity. And I think a lot of the time you're effectively catching them almost by accident but it is a devastating tactic. It's accounted for so many fish when the going's tough, when those fish aren't on the bottom and they aren't feeding. There's nothing else that's gonna catch you fish in those situations. Well, that's it for my short session here at Ladywood. We've had a real mixed bag of conditions on this session. It's been sunny, rainy, windy, but we've still managed to put a fish on the bank. And hopefully this video has shown you that zigs don't have to be difficult and confusing. And they are in fact a really effective way of catching carp. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fox YouTube channel and I'll see you again next time.